Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Michigan State Championship, checking in team number 33, Killer Bees, and their fantastic machine they're bringing on here. A couple uh, event wins under their belt already and looking really good here at MSC. To help me talk more about this row up, by the way, I have Emilio, Michael, and Joshua. And you got to just check this out. What a robust design they go through here. Very clean look. Of course, we'll be following that cargo in. Uh, some cool pneumatics, too, with some sensors inside as we go through. Uh, of course, into their shooter and an automation climber all coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career application. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. So starting out, talk to me about your intake. I'd love to hear more about, uh, you know, how did you come up with what this is in particular, especially more something that it looks compliant to me, but it is quite rigid at the same time. Uh, and then any changes you made throughout the season? Yeah, absolutely. So you, with the intake, you always want that balance between like compliant and rigid. So we have this perfect balance here. So here I'll start down in the front. We have our uh, intake flap, which kind of gives a nice textured surface for the balls to grab onto. It's kind of the opposite of what you want with the bumpers, because with the bumpers, you want a slick uh, kind of material, but that doesn't really pick up the balls well. So we have this nice uh, intake flap here. The intake is pneumatically actuated right here, and then on it, the first thing that touches the ball is these uh, compliant wheels that we actually cut the edges off to give it more of a slapping feel, and it actually uh, handles the ball surprisingly nicely. Up here, we have uh, two-inch uh, OD tubes that have heat shrink over them, and that really grips the balls nicely and sends them right over the ramp into our uh, two different indexers. Now the indexers are both pneumatically actuated, and so they, when the when the indexer pulls in, or when the pneumatic pulls in, the indexer shoots out, and at the tip of them we have rollers, which sends the ball shooting right through the hole of our shooter. We also have this fin in the middle here that never lets the ball rest in our dead space, so the ball can go either in the left or the right, and we'll get into later about the color sensors, but from here we go into the shooter where it picks up with our two different wheels down there. And if we swing over here, we can have the, send the ball right up here. And then we have two different wheels. We have uh, our front wheel over here and our back wheel with a belt that is spun 180 to give us a near perfect dead ball, or near perfect uh, no spin ball. And what that does is it prevents bounce outs and it's really clean. Uh, like when it's traveling through the air, so it doesn't interfere with anything else. I want to ask you on the yeah. uh, the pneumatics that you have as it comes in, when do those actually actuate, like in the process of intaking cargo? Is it when you're going to shoot? Is it right away when it comes in? When do those pneumatics actually actuate? So we always send one ball into our infeeder right here, and the sure. other ball stays in storage there. Okay. That way our shooting process is faster, and we had a faster cycle time. And, and I like mentioned we'll be talking about sensors in just a little bit too, but how does it know, like, which which one to actuate or do both of them actuate so depending on what color we are what uh what preset color that we determine if we are on say the red alliance yeah. like the bumpers show it'll store a red ball in there okay. say we're on the blue alliance it'll spit the blue ball out sure sure uh and then uh, i want to ask you on on your shooter in particular so when you're looking at the game itself you know we've seen teams go uh you know turret with no swerve you know swerve swerve with turret and then we have swerve with no turret when you were analyzing the game why was this the best fit for 33. Well, I feel like with a with a swerve, every your whole robot acts as the turret in a way. So, the, just to be able to have just spin the whole robot creates a whole level of simplicity rather than having a turret on top of the swerve. Makes sense that. And then I know we're going to talk about a few sensors as well too. So I'd love to hear about. We mentioned the color sensor before, and then if we can demonstrate uh, maybe a little bit coming to your robot too, that'd be awesome. Of course. So. Um, Going back to uh, the, in, uh, the intake and really the whole shooting process, there are four separate sensors uh, on this robot. The first here is a beam brake sensor that goes across the front of the intake. Um, the purpose of the beam brake sensor is to detect the presence of a third ball entering the robot so we can actually reverse the intake, blow it out. Um, that helps prevent uh, gaining those pesky penalty points that uh, we really don't want to get. Um, uh, 
In here, though, we have two color sensors, as Emilio mentioned earlier. The purpose is to detect if we have a red ball, blue ball on the left or right side, um, and also helps determine which side we should fire. So if we're red alliance and there's a red ball on the left side, we will fire the left side. If there is no balls, it's possible, you know, there's a malfunction somewhere. Sure. We'll fire both. Um, a lot of the software development this year is focusing on eliminating edge cases and making uh, the process as automated as possible. The driver has to press one button and all these different subsystems will all actuate at the same time um, in sync uh, to feed the balls as quickly as possible from indexer in the front through the infeeder and out the shooter wheel into the hub. Um, our last sensor is a banner sensor um, that detects the presence of the ball in the infeeder. So it's that little uh, yellow box there. And its purpose, uh, again, it's to cue a ball. So if I put a red ball and I'm red alliance, um, it will push the ball into the infeeder. It will stay there. Um, and then when I shoot, it will immediately push it out of the shooter wheel. Our flywheel um, is on basically at all times um, at some idle speed. Um, that allows it to spin up a bit faster. We don't really you know, drain the battery that much at all just by having it on. Um, and it just allows for faster spin up time. Um, lastly, we also have a hood motor. Um, it's powered by a bag motor uh, down through a pulley. Uh, it's not visible at all right now, but it's down there. Um, and we have a Falcon running this flywheel that Emil mentioned earlier. Um, both of these are sensor controlled. In this case, it's a can coder for the hood that's right there. Um, so it allows us to have absolute positioning of uh, the hood at all times, no matter where it started up. So that's kind of a general theme on our whole robot. Can we see maybe uh, some of the color sensor being demonstrated as well too? Yes, and can you sure. narrate a little bit uh, for so, that? Um, Part of the color sensors is uh, we want the drivers to be able to know what's going on as well. So if I go ahead and enable, um, and could you go ahead and feed one red ball for me, please? And there we go. The red ball settled on the left side of the robot and then auto cues in right into the infeeder, and there, the banner sensor stops the ball, um, stops the infeeder motor. And could you go ahead and cue a second ball? Thank you. Um, what you might notice there is we have LEDs on the side. Uh, red LEDs on top for the infeeder, LEDs on the bottom for the presence of a ball. Um, and now we actually know what color balls we have in the robot. This is just mainly for the driver to indicate if we have one, two balls in the robot, and then we can shoot. So um, if someone wants to go ahead and help me with this, just to block the balls, I don't want to hit someone. Um, yep, just tap them to the side. So um, we use the limelight typically to aim. Um, right now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and blow the balls out, just like this. And there we go, two balls out incredibly quickly. When we use the limelight, we use the limelight to calculate the distance to the target, um, kind of using the angle. We also use the limelight to angle the robot horizontally, so you can kind of see if I aim, it's gonna move slightly, just like that. Um, and then it uses that to calculate, um, and we use an analytical model uh, instead of like um, set points and sure. uh, interpolation through a, net, uh, a table. We use uh, just a constant function to calculate from distance to hood angle to motor speed. Um, all the way through. Um, another feature um, that we want to highlight uh, is that if I put in a blue ball, say I'm Red Alliance right now, if I feed a blue ball in, go ahead, we automatically Let's eject catch. the ball out of the robot. Um, so that makes it so the driver doesn't have to think about, oh, I actually picked up a blue ball. It just comes out of the robot automatically. What, what happens if you have a red in first and then a blue gets intaked? Uh, that's a great question. Um, we can do that right now. Go ahead, feed a red ball in. And then a blue ball. So now um, we have a red ball queued. We're not going to blow it out. So what Emilio can do as driver, you want to come over, block the ball. We can shoot the red ball out first. And then the blue ball will come out on its own right afterwards. Um, and it won't shoot high enough to get into the hub at all. So that's kind of part of the automation right there as well. Well, let's keep moving on. Talk about your uh, climbers. We're going to hand it uh, to Joshua. And then Michael will come back to you to speak a little bit more about uh, the program on that side. But I'd love to hear a little bit more about uh, the mechanics behind your climber uh, and how that fit for you from a packaging standpoint, too. Yeah, sure. So we really designed our robot around the climber. So our climber is set in the middle of our robot. This has an elevator, which can telescope upwards. Uh, as you saw earlier, our ball actually goes through the middle of our climber. So it was a big ch design challenge to work out. So basically, this elevator will extend upwards. These hooks will open and grab the mid bar. Uh, do we want to put the elevator up? Sure. Yeah, just prep climb. Prep climb and disable. Prep climb. Three, two, one. So as you can see, our elevator comes upwards. Our, the mid bar would basically come in here, touch these sensors, 
We have a sensor on each side, and these sensors will display on the LEDs, uh, basically, so we know, uh, we know when the bar comes in contact with each sensor. So as you can see, the, we, in the programming, we have it configured to automatically close the hook as each sensor is activated. These are really cool mechanisms because these are over-centering hooks. So as I touch the center, this linkage over-centers, and now it's impossible for this hook to come undone because it's over-centered right there. So this is actually our third revision of our hook design. Uh, at first, we started off, started off with something more like this, where we have more of a fish hook design. So the bar would come throughout the top but we experienced that it's hard for the bar to always align in the same spot every time. So we decided to switch to more of a slot, slotted design. So now when the bar comes in any of this area, the hook will always over center and fully uh, grab the bar. So I know you guys got a match coming up in just a little bit, so I wanna make sure we cover anything else uh, on this. Anything from a programming standpoint uh, that we wanna cover before we send you off for your next match? Uh, so, continuing on kind of the software side of the climber, um, just like the shooting mechanism, um, we have a lot of sensors. Um, in this case, it's mostly encoders, three of them, um, and four uh, various sensors to detect the presence of the bar. Um, Josh already highlighted these touch sensors on each side um, that detect the presence of the mid bar and the traversal bar. Um, so, but down here, uh, to determine absolute position of the elevator, which is a, a you know, a, it moves linearly, it's not really something that goes well with something a sensor that rotates, in this case, two rev through bore encoders. Um, but by using two through bore encoders um, at different gear ratios, we can actually kind of calculate the exact position of the elevator from bottom to top. Um, that basically allows us, if the robot is enabled or uh, initialized or turned on in any state, we know where it is. It makes it so that we can actually control it without having to do through go through um, time costing zeroing procedures. That um, So it's, it makes it a lot easier to handle the robot. Um, the same thing is true for um, the arm. The arm here has an encoder, can encoder right here, um, on a one-to-one -one gear ratio here. So every degree the arm rotates up um, is a degree uh, of, of the can encoder. So right now it's about 30 degrees, and then 90 degrees, and so on. So um, we also have um, some sensors here, uh, two uh, photoreflective um, sensors on each side, so one here um, and one here as well. So. Uh, those sensors will detect the presence of, in this case, it would be the mid bar, or sorry, it's the high bar. Um, and as we go up, we latch, um, detect the presence, and we climb around. So part of the software uh, is utilizing all these sensors. Um, and it's important because it allows us to actually perform a completely automated climb. I like to say it's one button, um, but it kind of is really two. One of them you saw there, it prepped the climb. The arm moves up automatically, stabilizes itself, elevator goes up. Um, the intake deploys, hooks open, and the driver simply has to drive in and press our second button, and then the, um, and then the climb procedure goes all the way through from bottom all the way up to the traversal bar. Well, 33, Killer Beast, thanks again for taking the time to talk to your robot. You're doing fantastic here at MSC so far. We're going to let you, you get out to your next match. Good luck, mm -hmm. and, of course, I uh, hope to see you at World Championships as well. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thank you for your time. First Updates Now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Thanks for watching. If you want to join us for future fun streams, be sure to click the follow button and turn on the notification bell to know when we're live. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. View archives and unique content at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And first updates now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.